Hello viewers, welcome to the Postgraduate Diploma in Environmental and Occupational Health Program. I am Prof. Rupini. Today I would like to discuss about some of the important factors of MEVE004 that is the industrial sector. So today we are going to learn as well as discuss and interact about pesticide industry and then waste generated from this industry and how it will affect on human health and also environment and also some of the management practices. So we know that food production is the primary agenda of all almost all countries with a 4C of increase in global population which is expected to grow more than 10 billion by 2050. So Food and Agricultural Organization of United Nations already cautioned the entire world that the world food production needs to increase by 70% in order to keep pace with the demand of growing population. So the increasing world population is a major role. It has a major role and put a tremendous amount of pressure on the existing agricultural system. So that food needs can be met from the same as well as the existing resources like land, water, like that. So in the process of increasing crop production, they have to apply and they have to manage so many procedures by the application of herbicides, insecticides, fungicides and nematicides, fertilizers and also soil amendments which are also being used in higher quantities than in the past to combat or to cross that to, to reach that limit. So these chemicals have um, maybe they are coming into the picture since the introduction of the synthetic insecticides in 1940 when that is the very first one that is the organochlorine insecticide which is used for the pest management. So before this type of organochlorine uh, insecticides there are so many weeds, pests, insects as well as diseases they were controlled by using the sustainable practices like natural practices like cultural, mechanical and physical controlling strategies. Previously that time there were no pesticides, no fertilizers, only natural first fertilizers, natural pesticides they have used. So pesticides became an integral part of our modern life and are also used to protect agricultural land, not only the agricultural land but also the to store the grain also and, uh, and also flower gardens and to eradicate the pest which is transmitting a dangerous infectious disease to the general public as well as into the environment. So manufacturers and researchers and uh, uh, those who wants to do uh, the production they are designing new formulations for these pesticides to meet the global demand. So ideally the applied pesticides should only be toxic to the target organism. So that means to which organism they are targeting, whether it is a herb, uh, whether it is an insects, whether it is a pest, it should not cross the limit or it should not target the other organisms. So they should be biodegradable and also eco-friendly to some extent. Unfortunately, this is very very rare the case as most of the pesticides are non-specific and may kill the organisms which are harmless or useful to the ecosystem also. So the situation is very very pathetic. So it has been estimated that only about 0.1% of the pesticides reach the target organisms and the remaining bulk or the remaining rest of these uh, uh, applied pesticides they will contaminate the surrounding environment. So the repeated use or otherwise the uh, quantity is more the, of the usage of the persistent as well as the non-biodegradable uh, pesticides are polluting the uh, various components of the environment like air, soil as well as the uh, general environment. So pesticides they will once entered into the food chain they are bioaccumulating in the higher tropic levels. So what is environment? So we know that environment everything is around us. So that means it is not only polluting a part of that environment, 
it is polluting and showing an adverse effect on the natural elements like people and all manufactured parts as well as the indoor areas where we are living as well as where we are working. So the environment that is the soil, water, plants, animals, buildings, factories and all that they contain. So anyone who, who uses a pesticide, they should consider um, that how it affects the environment. So some important types of pesticides we have given in our course that is the uh, neonicotinoid pesticides, organophosphate pesticides, carbamate pesticides, organochlorine pesticides and uh, sulfonyl urea herbicides and fungicides and in insecticides. So you must be aware of certain physical and then chemical characteristics of pesticides before understanding uh, or otherwise if you are using for the application of these pesticides in any of the form. So the first characteristic feature is solubility, second is adsorption, third is persistence and volatility to know how they move into the environment and interact with it. So solubility we know that it is a measure of the ability of pesticide to dissolve in a particular solvent, normally it is water and highly soluble um, pesticides they will dissolve easily in water. They are most likely to move with the surface water runoff or otherwise it can leach down through the soil than less soluble pesticides. And the next character is the adsorption that is a measure of how well a pesticide sticks to the soil particle. It can also occur because of the attraction between the chemical as well as the soil particle. Typically oil soluble particles which are more attracted to clay particles and also the organic matter in soil that water soluble pesticides. And also pesticide molecules with a positive charge are tightly adsorbed to the negatively charged soil particles. So any pesticide which absorbs to the soil particle is less likely to move from the spray site than ones that does not absorb, adsorb tightly to the soil. And also the other one other characteristic feature is the persistence that means what is the duration of the time it will spend in the environment. So it is an ability of a pesticide to remain present and active in its original form for longer duration before breaking down. And the next is the residue. So residue that means what is the leftover. It is the amount of pesticide that remains in the environment after an application or accidental spill I can say that. So a residue is desirable when it provides long term pest control activity and also reduces the need for the repeated application. So that means how much quantity and then what is the potentiality of that particular pesticide. But some persistent pesticides can harm the sensitive plants also and animals and also humans. So it is most important to prevent persistent pesticides from moving off site through improper handling, application, drift, leaching or runoff. So there are so many procedures are available that will break down the pesticide compounds into simpler. Normally it is usually the, to the so, uh, toxic chemicals. So chemical degradation normally involves a chemical reaction with water because usually the solvent is here it is water. So it does not involve living organisms. Sometimes microbial action is also there to break down the chemicals by soil microorganisms uh, like uh, fungi or bacteri uh, bacteria. And another process is also there that is a photo degradation. It will also break down the chemicals in, uh, um, in the presence of sunlight. So if we will consider pesticide cycle, how it moves, how it will uh, enter into the general environment. First we have to understand that they move from the targeted application site in many ways. So in air, in water and it, it will be attached to the soil particles and or, uh, also on the any uh, objects like people uh, or otherwise vessels or uh, poles like that. So movement of air if you will consider. So that is a drift is the movement of a pesticide from the application site either by the wind or by the air currents. 
people those who will mix these pesticides as well as load and apply these pesticides outdoor are usually aware of how easily these pesticides may drift from the application site to the other areas so they may travel because they are in the form of spray droplets definitely it will move by wind or otherwise sometimes if it is a liquid pesticide so vapors will enter into the atmosphere or it may attach to the dust particles or otherwise sometimes it may be solid particles and even on blowing soil particles so that is the movement in air if we will look into the movement in water so most offsite pesticide movement in water is either by the runoff that is a surface movement or by leaching procedure that is a downward movement through the soil so runoff and leaching that can occur when too much pesticide is applied that means the more quantity is applied than required or it may by the accidental spill on the onto a surface or otherwise too much rain or irrigation water moves pesticides through the soil offside because it is a, we cannot control the rain and then and then maybe it will enter into the ground water so highly water soluble or uh, uh, persistent pesticides which are used so that time it will happen in the increased quantity and as well as the frequency of pesticide application may definitely pose a major challenge to the targeted pest that can cause either the disperse to the new environment or adapt to the uh, new conditions so the adaptation of the pest to the new environment definitely through very very many mechanisms it may change the gene mutation of that particular pest or particular insects or it may change in the population growth rate and also in increase in the number of the generations so ultimately the result is increased incidence of pest resurgence we can say that and appearance of pest species that are resistant to pesticides even after application of the pesticide so this is a very big problem for a farmer so the run of water it may move pesticides into drainage systems that is another problem and it may enter into the streams water ponds and other surface water bodies way from where they can travel great distance and then enter into the major water bodies so pesticides sometimes it may leach down through the soil and may reach the underground water also so the most important part we have to understand over here it is application of the pesticide it definitely plays an important role in the pest management procedure so proper technique of application of pesticide and the equipment used for applying pesticides they are more important to the success of pest control operations so the application of pesticide is not only the operation of sprayer or the duster it should be integrated or otherwise we can say that we have to use in association with thorough knowledge of the pest uh, problem the use of pesticides knowledge and also the application of equipment and also the pest management points pest management methods so the main purpose of the pesticide application technique is to cover the target area with maximum efficiency and also with minimum efforts to keep the pest under control as well as minimum contamination of non targets so all pesticides are poisonous substances we have seen in the uh, previous session also any chemical is poisonous if it is cross its limits and they can cause harm to the all living things so their use must be very very judicious so the application techniques ideally should be target oriented so that safety to the non target areas as well as endangered species and also the environment is to be ensured so proper selection of application equipment knowledge of the pest behavior and skillful dispersal methods are more important in the pest management so the complete knowledge of the pest problem is more important to define the target area or the location of the pest uh, on the uh, foliage under the leaves or the at the root zone like that so the most susceptible stage of the pest for the control measures will 
help to decide the time of application also and also the requirement of coverage and also spray droplet size that depends upon the mobility and the size of the pest. So the mode of action of pesticide that is uh, relatively toxic, uh, toxicity and other physicochemical properties will definitely help to decide the handling precautions as well as the uh, agitation requirements like that. So apart from the complete knowledge of the equipment, it is also necessary to develop desired skill of operation to select, to estimate the number and the types of uh, uh, equipments which are required to treat the crop in minimum time and to optimize the use of the equipment. So there are many adverse effects of pesticides on human health have started because of their toxicity and persistence in the environment and also their tendency to enter into the food chain and they are able to enter. So pesticides can enter the human body by direct contact with the chemicals maybe through food especially fruits and vegetables which are contaminated with water or polluted air. If we will look into the air pollution because of the pesticides. So the presence of pesticides in uh, air that can be caused by the number of factors like spray, drifting, volatilization of the gaseous one and then uh, uh, and the liquid form, liquid forms of the uh, pesticides from the treated surfaces are the aerial application of pesticides. But the extent of drift that is depends upon the droplet size to what we have seen and then wind speed in that particular area. So the rate of volatilization is dependent on time that means whenever we are applying the pesticide after pesticide treatment. So the surface on which the, uh, the pesticides settles and the ambient temperature, humidity and wind speed as well as the vapor pressure of that ingredients. So there are so many factors we have to understand before applying a certain pesticide. So the volatility or the semi-volatility nature of any pesticide compounds, they will constitute an important risk of atmospheric pollution of large cities. For instance, organophosphorus pesticides are there. They were identified from the environmental samples of air only, not from that particular form. And also the surface which is uh, uh, following the agricultural spray applications uh, in many of the cities. And also there are some case studies also there that is a Italian forest, the indiscriminate use of the pesticides and its active metabolite, metabolites that leads to the contamination of water bodies and ambient air possibly affecting the health of the aquatic biota, fishes, amphibians as well as birds. So the most important part over here is a buffer strip should be maintained. What is a buffer strip? So the buffer strip is an area of land, a piece of land which should be maintained in permanent vegetation that helps to control air, soil and water quality along with other environmental problems that deals primarily on land which is used in the agricultural. So these Buffer strips what they will do? They will trap the sediment and enhance the filtration of the nutrients and also pesticides by slowing down runoff that could enter the local surface waters. So now we will see the water pollution. So how the water will be polluted by the pesticide application? So pesticide, the residuals in water, they are major concern because they pose serious threats to biological communities, uh, not only humans but remaining species. So there are different ways how these pesticides can get into the water bodies like accidental spillage or the industrial effluents or the uh, surface runoffs or they can transport from pesticidal uh, treatment uh, soils uh, uh, and then washing of spray equipments after spray operations and also drift into ponds, lakes, streams, uh, river water, aerial spray to control all water inhibiting pests. So these pesticides generally move from fields to various water reservoirs by runoff or the drainage uh, induced by rain or irrigation. So other major important uh, uh, threat is the soil pollution. So a major fraction of the pesticides which are used for the agriculture and other purposes that accumulates in the soil. 
So that is also the repeated use or otherwise the indiscriminate use we can say that the use of pesticides they will definitely aggravate this soil accumulation problem. So here also there are so many factors to consider like soil properties or the soil microflora that determines the fate of applied pesticides because it, it, the, the, it, it definitely will undergo a variety of degradation procedures and then transportation, adsorption and desorption processes. So the degraded pesticides they will interact with the soil and also with the indigenous microorganisms so altering the so much of microbial diversity and also the biochemical reactions and enzymatic activity of that particular microbial diversity. So pesticides that reach the soil definitely, definitely alters the microbial biomass. So any alteration in the microbi uh, microbes or the microbial uh, uh, biomass it will alter in the activities of soil microorganisms because of the applied pesticides that leads to the disturbance in the soil ecosystems and loss of soil fertility. So there are number of studies have been proved as well as undertaken and highlighted the adverse impacts of the pesticides on the soil microorganisms as well as soil respiration. In addition to this exogenous application of pesticides that can also influence the function of the uh, good or otherwise beneficial root colonizing uh, microbes like uh, bacteria as well as the uh, arbuscular mycorrhizae, fungi and then algae in soil by influencing their growth, colonization and the metabolic activities. And also there are many biochemical reactions will occur in the soil like nitrogen fixation, nitrification and uh, ammonification uh, and also by activating or the deactivating specific soil microorganisms or enzymes. So another important uh, uh, procedure over here factor that we can consider is biomagnification. So you must have studied in the previous sessions that the increase in the concentration of pesticide or any chemical because of its persistent nature or the non-biodegradable nature in the tissues of organisms at each successive level of the food chain is normally we can termed as biomagnification. So because of this phenomena organisms which are higher levels uh, which are present at the higher levels of food chain they will experience greater harm to the um, when we compare to those the lower levels. So the extent of biomagnification definitely increased with the increase in the uh, persistence as well as the lipophilic uh, characteristic features of particular pesticide. So there are so many factors to consider to before applying the, any of the pesticide. So what will happen? So for example, uh, these uh, organochlorin pesticides are there. They are known to have higher biomagnification capacity rate and are more persistent in wider range of organisms when compared to the organophosphates. For example, reproductive failure we have seen and then population decline in the fish eating birds and also, uh, and also observed as a uh, result of the DDE uh, that is a uh, induced eggshell thinning. So, so these are the some of the important uh, uh, pesticides they will have uh, adverse effects on the uh, not only humans for the bird species also. So for that pest management is more important consideration to understand and then how it will be managed properly. So what is pest management? It is an in integrated approach to tackling a pest problem that may either control or uh, as well as the prevention of this one. So the pest management Personals, they need they need to know about the uh, knowledge as well as skill for the latest products as well as the equipment for the uh, uh, pesticides in order to provide efficient uh, as well as effective solution to the customers. So knowledge of the local as well as the international regulatory hygiene and safety standards and conforming to these forms is an integral part of every. Uh, pest managers responsibility. In the current scenario if we will look into that how these 
uh, optimization will takes place in the use of the pesticides which is more important to reduce the environmental contamination while increasing their effectiveness against the target pests. So, this way we can reduce at least pesticide resistance as well as the pesticide resurgence problems. So, one should consider adopting an integrated pest management approach for controlling pests because these practices are designed to have minimal environmental disturbance. So, the most important aim as well as role of integrated pest management is not only to reduce the indiscriminate pesticide usage but also to substitute hazardous chemicals with safe uh, chemistries or the chemical processes. So, it is a process of achieving long term environmentally safe pest control uh, using wide variety of technology and other potential pest management practices. So, according to the uh, National Academy of Science, integrated pest management is an ecolog ecological approach in pest management in which all available necessary techniques which are consolidated in an unified program so that all population that means the entire population that can be managed in, uh, in a very good manner that economic damage is avoided as well as the uh, adverse side effects are minimized. So, this is the time that necessitates compulsory that the proper use of pesticides to protect our environment and eventually health hazards which are associated with it. So, the alternative control strategies like uh, integrated uh, pest management that deploys the combination of different controlling measures like a cultural control or the use of the uh, resistant genotype and also physical and mechanical control and rational use of the pesticide that can reduce the number of amount of the uh, pesticide applications or otherwise uh, uh, identify vulnerable areas or uh, improve land use and application methods as well as time of pesticide applications according to the weather forecast like that and select products wisely and whenever possible use pesticides that are less likely to leach. So, before applying they have to read labels for such warnings and then handling practices and to handle the pesticides safely. If we will look into the pesticide regulations in our country, the Insecticide Act in 1968 and uh, Insecticide Rules 1971 the, to regulate the important registration procedures, manufacture, sale, transport, distribution and also the use of insecticides with a view to prevent risk to human beings as well as the animals and for all connected matters throughout India. So, all insecticides that is the pesticides they have to necessarily undergo a registration process with the central insecticide board and registration committee before they can be made available for use or sale that means it will be re before releasing into the market. So, the typically all insecticides and pesticides in India are those substances which are listed in the schedule of the insecticide act 1968. So, the pesticide management bill 2020 was introduced in Rajya Sabha by the Minister of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare uh, on March 23rd, 2020. It seeks to regulate the manufacture, import, sale, storage, distribution, use and disposal of the pesticides in order to ensure the availability of safe pesticides and also minimize the risk to humans, animals as well as the general environment. So, dear learners, you must have understood the entire procedure of how these the pesticide industry and then how the wastage from the pesticidal industry and their applications into the general environment. I would like to conclude by saying that it is an important part of the using pesticides legally and responsibly uh, which is considering where the pesticide may end up once it leaves the container and whether it might harm or damage non-target sites, plants or animals. So, by applying pesticides at the right time in the right place and also with the proper application technique. So, by using this application techniques we can greatly reduce or sometimes even prevent the drift runoff as well as leaching. So, once pesticides enters into the groundwater and surface water they are hazardous to aquatic organisms, plants as well as wildlife. So, we should implement best management practices to prevent runoff and leaching of pesticides 
and sensitive areas are also there like uh, schools, playgrounds, endangered species that is habitats and then uh, ornamental plantings and non-target organisms like plants, bees and other beneficial infect, uh, insects, fish, wildlife and livestock. Because of the greater risk of injury to people, plants and animals, we must know when and how to properly apply pesticides in our near such areas. So always check the label for the statements on the endangered as well as the threatened species. So and also it needs to consult a, a, a bulletin which are used for these pesticides, the details of the procedures for protecting them. It is our responsibility not only to follow the label directions but also to use the best management practices that present the least risk to the environment while achieving effective pest control. With this I would like to conclude in the next session with other topic we will meet again. Thank you.